back in 1926, the liner SS Roma entered service. She had a happy life sailing the world's oceans throughout the interwar period, but back on shore the Regia Marina's senior officers were debating the utility of aircraft carriers. With the main naval rival being France, it was generally thought that Italy's limited resources would be better utilised in the construction of more traditional capital ships. After all, given France's proximity, Italian land air bases could reach anywhere that would matter in a war with the existing bombers of the Regia Aeronautica. However, when Italy entered World War II, France was on its way out, and the main foe was now the Royal Navy, who not only had aircraft carriers of their own, with which to maintain fighter defences of their ships, the questionable utility of Bern aside, that hadn't been an issue when thinking about fighting the Marine Nationale, but the Royal Navy was also based considerably further away. That, and the Regia Aeronautica and the Regia Marino barely being on speaking terms, probably also didn't go unnoticed. Early war experience fighting the British confirmed the utility of carrier-based aircraft, not the least of which being the British attack on the fleet base at Taranto. Thus, in late 1940, initial work began on stripping the Roma for conversion to some sort of carrier, a number of conversion plans having been sketched out in the 1930s. This all stalled out in early 1941, though, when the Regia Aeronautica claimed that it had no aircraft suitable for carrier operations, and would not have any for quite some time. Then the next month, the Battle of Cape Matapan caused Mussolini to turn around and inform the Regia Aeronautica that in fact such things would be made available, or else, and thus work was able to recommence. Given the short period of time they had to get the ship in service, the Regia Mariner took a design that had been made in 1936 and tried to make as few adjustments as possible, whilst also cribbing notes from the Kriegsmarine, which was having its own fun trying to complete the carrier Graf Zeppelin. By July, the Regia Aeronautica had completed its mandated about face and was beginning studies into a folding wing aircraft, whilst in the interim it was decided to conduct minimal adaptations on some RE-2000s for the first air group. Dubbed Aquila, or Eagle, the ship would need new machinery, since Roma was only capable of 20 knots and the Regia Marina wanted 30 knots. This would be supplied by 151,000 shaft horsepower driving four screws using the machinery of two cancelled Capitani Romani class light cruisers. The carrier would displace 25,500 tons and carry either 38 fighters in a pure air defence role or 16 fighters and 9 strike aircraft, if a carrier based strike aircraft was invented, in an offensive role. This could be increased if the RE-2001 was used, and still further increased if a folding wing version was devised. The hull would be bulged to improve stability and provide a modicum of torpedo defence, with just over 3 inches of armour plate fitted over the magazines and the fuel tanks. Defensive armament would consist of 8 single 6-inch guns, although this was later changed to 8 5.3-inch guns, which would be mounted in pairs on hull sponsons with a mix of 88mm and 37mm anti-aircraft guns initially, replaced during the conversion with 12 single 65mm guns mounted on sponsons, and no less than 132 Breda 20mm guns, pretty much installed anywhere that space could be found, in a rather interesting series of sextuple mountings. The island, which incorporated the command area's funnel and a fair number of the new light anti-aircraft battery, was expanded from the initial design and would have ended up being quite large in the end, as well as carrying a GUFO radar set, one of the first which would be deployed on a Regia Marina vessel. As previously mentioned, the RE-2000 had been ditched for the RE-2001, and if a small deck park was used and some other aircraft were hung from the hangar ceiling, a total of 51 such planes could be carried. A slightly modified RE-2001 could double as a torpedo bomber. The fighter version would be launched via catapult, whilst the torpedo carrying option would need to use almost the full length of the flight deck, since the torpedo got in the way of the catapult carriage. However, things now began to stall, as regardless of the fact that work on Aquila was already slowing due to a lack of skilled manpower, Another carrier conversion, Spaviero, was begun, and the estimated completion date for Aquila slipped from October 1942 to July 1943. 
Then in November 1942, she was lightly damaged by bombing and was moved into a supposedly safer area of the port, which delayed things even further. And at the same time, Operation Torch forced a redirection of Regia Marina resources from the offensive to the defensive. And so by June 1943, only some of the ship's systems had been tried at all, and sea trials were put off for September. But near the end of June, almost all work was stopped to redirect manpower fully into submarine and escort construction. By August, although the hull and machinery was actually almost complete, the flight equipment and anti-aircraft batteries had yet to be installed, and very few aircraft had been converted. The Italian armistice in September 1943 finally put an end to any marginal work that might still have been being done, and the ship was then looted for useful equipment by the Germans. After which, she actually proved something of an anomaly, as attempts by Allied bombers, Italian frogmen and German troops to sink her at various times for various reasons all failed for various complicated reasons, and so she was recaptured in 1945 with little more to show for the past two years than a slight list to starboard. She was therefore moved to a quieter part of the port of Genoa for a while, as the new Italian government tried to work out what to do with her, with the decision eventually coming in 1952 to scrap her. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.